morning, everyone. You're listening to Turtle Island News with Tracy Kennedy. And today is Thursday, October 8th, the Oregon mass shooting. We're going to go into that today, and I'm going to be hitting it in a couple different ways. Um, Probably not the ones that you've seen, and I did put up some links today, because there's quite a few for this. One of the things I thought was weird, when it talks about this mass shooting, it was in the top 10 people killed of a shooter at this community college. And then way under it, it had Russia carries out airstrikes, Hurricane um, Jokum. Doesn't mention anything about United States bombing a hospital, which they've had to do some Olympic backpedaling on. We need to talk about, well, a couple things, and I've got lots of notes, so I may be jumping around today. Welcomed in hell, embraced by the devil, these numbers that keep coming up. Details of this twisted letter left behind by an Oregon college gunman as it's revealed that he had Ashburgers and was kicked out of the army 2008. People who went to school with this mass murderer spoke of the chilling drawings of skulls and bones and coffins that Mercer would scrawl on all of his notebooks. He is also alleged to have a manifesto with the number 666 written on it. Welcomed in hell and embraced by the devil in simple Germantria equals 322. That's the skull and bones number again. So this guy did this strictly for satanic purposes. He did it to become a god in hell. He wants to be evil. That is apparently his goal to serve Satan, a source said. We will go into these things. Because the power of Germantria here cannot be underestimated. But we need to talk about some specific things about him. Some specific things about what I found out about him. Because it is another psychotropic drug shooter. He also takes the limitless drug that I've talked to you about. And we're going to talk about what that drug does because I am admitting I'm taking it I have taken it I'm not taking it now because of its side effects but he was again on a cocktail of things now from natural news all the information about Christopher Mercer the now deceased shooter who recently killed and injured numerous victims at Oregon Community College while the mainstream media follows the predictable script of blaming guns for violence, we now know that Mercer was almost certainly damaged by vaccines and medications altering his mind, leading to violent behavior that we so often see when psychotropic medications are involved. We also know that Harper was visibly vaccine damaged because he'd suffered from Asperger's Syndrome, an autismic, is that the word, spectrum disorder. Now, as printed in the New York Times, Mercer's mother opened up about her difficulties raising a son who used to bang his head against the wall and said that both she and her son struggled with Asperger's Syndrome, this disorder. Now, in addition to talking about guns, Ms. Harper, who is 64, was a prolific commenter online in forums dealing with medical issues specifically, frequently asking and answering questions from strangers with a tone of empathy and concern. She expressed having expertise in autism, saying that both she and her son whom she never mentioned by name, had Asperger's Syndrome. 
Now, vaccines causing autism, especially in young men, has been admitted by top CDC scientists. We know this, and there are certain things done to people because of these things. Now, some interesting stuff about new Oregon laws that actually expanded gun licensing. Now, here's a release from Portland, Oregon. Oregon's first talked about law for 2015 was the legalization of recreational marijuana that doesn't go into effect fully until January 1st next year, but it started in July. Also, strange new laws that I want to read to you. Um, Children of volunteer firefighters and reserve police officers killed or disabled in the line of duty are eligible for special scholarships. Similar scholarships have been long available to children of killed or disabled police officers and firefighters. That's what. For closed homes on the auction block must contain a warning to prospective buyers if they haven't been tested for methamphetamine contamination, which actually stays in the house if it's been cooked there. Next one, young people who report alcohol-related emergencies can't be prosecuted for being a minor in possession of alcohol. The law does not shield them from any other offenses, such as driving under the influence. Now, with one minor out-of-state marijuana conviction, they now can apply for a concealed hangman license and handgun license in Oregon. So, you can have a conviction and still get a gun in Oregon. Oregon Department of Justice gains more power to take on charities that fail to file annual reports. Strange, probably nothing. Interesting things that came up just in case there happened to be a shooter. Now, when we talk about Ashburgers and mass murder, it's a note from something I read in 2012. There was a statement by the IACC, a statement on autism and violence. Whenever something horrible happens, the public and the media look for answers, obviously factoids, to explain what may be truly inexplicable. Whatever information can be discovered is tossed out into the public view in hope that somehow a bunch of discrete facts and data points will somehow provide answers. This happens whenever there is a catastrophe, a fire, a plane crash, a mass killing. Now, Thanks to the internet, people all over the world speculate about what happened, why it happened, and often, in absence of any first-hand information, The result is to rush to judgment, and all too often innocent people are harmed. Sometimes early speculations happen when reporters observed a plane mishap and said the same thing happened on another flight a few years ago, and that report leads to the discovery of a flawed aircraft design and potential saving of lives when the design defect was corrected. Unfortunately, on other occasions, early speculation proves unfounded, wrong, or completely irrelevant. When that happens, innocent people are harmed by the rush to judgment, and I'm very concerned of what has happened now. As the public digests news of these mass murders, even like Sandy Hook, reporters then were saying that the killer had Ashburgers again, a specific, very specific form of autism. And every time a story does that, by typing a killer and Ashburgers in the same sentence, they are 
somehow implying that there is a connection between autism and mass murder. There is not. Statistics have a phrase for this situation that correlation does not imply causation. Let me explain this by way of example. Three banks are robbed in three different cities. Each bank had security cameras trained at the entrances. In each case, a review of the tapes show a white Toyota Camry pulling into the parking lot moments before the robbery. Was that a clue? Was the same car used in three banks? No, it was not. It was random. It was irrelevant. In fact, white Camrys are one of the most common cars in the country. We might observe them at the scene of almost anything, anywhere, without any causative connection at all. How about this? Little factoid. Most school shooters are Caucasian males. You might find that statement a little bit more shocking than the Camry one, but it is unfortunately true. Does that mean every white male Caucasian who enters a school is a potential mass murderer? Of course not. So suggesting a mass murder that he had Ashburgers is much the same. It may be true, but stating the fact does not explain the crime, does not help to prevent other crimes in the future. What it does do, and this is important, is paint a whole swathe and swath of this population, Ashburger people, with a brush that says potential mass murder. That, folks, is the problem because the average person does not know enough about Ashburgers to know it does not turn people into mass murderers. If you've ever met anyone with Ashburgers, you know it's not likely. So they file that factoid away till the next time they see someone with Ashburgers, right? Then instead of giving him a fair shake, they treat him like a potential killer. Everyone loses. And if you've known any adults with Ashburgers who've seen enough discrimination already, they would not be happy about that. And I have an article that you can read in detail. Now, this goes back to Philadelphia again. Because Philadelphia is the Beta Revolution, or the Beta Rebellion, because this has happened. The first of our kind has struck fear to the hearts of America. He cries. His cries have been heard even by the President. This is only beginning. The Beta Rebellion has begun. Soon, one of our brothers will take up arms and become martyrs in this revolution. On October 5th, one, a fellow robot will take up arms against a university near Philadelphia. This is written before this happened. And you can see a picture of it in images. He cries. His cries will be heard. The victims will cower in fear. The strength of the Union will decay a little more. If you are in that area, you are encouraged to stay home and watch the news as the chaos unfolds again. This was written and published before this happened. His sacrifice will echo throughout the nation. I plead to thee, brothers, we only have one chance, one spark for our revolution. The United States will soon condemn us to a status quo forever. Soon after the United Nations, don't let our one chance at writing history slip away. Martyr yourselves for the cause or support those who have the courage to do so. We have had a chance to make the world a better place for betas everywhere. Hero, have mercy on us. 
lend us your strength. Fight this evil. This is a trigger. And the FBI, ATF, warned of a threat of violence against a university near Philadelphia. On October 5th, they did. Beta Revolution Rebellion. Simple Germantia is 153. 153 is fish. October 5th at 1 p.m. CT. Simple Germantia is 293. 293. Play with those numbers. You have 923. Again, Pope Francis, Philadelphia. Now you may say to me, all of these things are nothing. But this threat was made on Channel 4 News and on a site, the exact same site that made the warning about this or Oregon shooting, that this is only the beginning. And to watch while chaos unfolds. This is a trigger, guys. I also have an interesting piece up there on what Modifaland does. Makes you love to work. It's fantastic if you have a project. It gives you such a narrow focus. The other thing it does is make you feel completely detached from everything else. Like feelings. Thoughts. Emotions. Now, of course, the Oregon gunman killed himself after police shot him. Hmm. And there are so many troubling signs about this that this is yet another false flag. And a sinister warning on a website the night before the massacre, and I have a link to that. Now, Chris Harper Mercer goes by the internet name Lithium Love. Love, Lithium. In the application of CIA, MKUltra, Monarch, Multiple Personality Disordered Drug Applications, Plo, Pro, um, Chlorpazine, is sometimes given by therapists to help alter or alters cope with the nausea and the vomiting that triggered responses give you. Most of the MK Ultra people, beings that we have spoken of and spoken to for the last little while, always say during the switch or while they're being programming there is a lot of nausea a lot of it he was on that most officers will not be programmed or will be programmed not to accept drugs except from their master lithium suppresses alter switching in some systems Harper Mercer says that his spiritual passion and interest was magic and the occult. The signature again of Crowleyan, Enochian, so Nephilim, sex magic. And when a guy says to you that he's spiritual, not religious, keep in the back of your head, Satan, too, is a spirit. He would probably say he's spiritual too. But this young man, heavily programmed and ready to go, followed the left-hand path. Mercer, like his idol, the black Manchurian candidate, Vester Lee Flanagan III, had been indoctrinated in this Crowleyan, Alistair Crowley stuff. Now, Harper Mercer is yet another MP, MPD, sleeper agent, hapless, 
mentally challenged CIA black. Well, he's mixed, light skinned, but enough that it probably scares people who don't like black people. He's a Manchurian candidate that says that he was receiving spiritual, mysterious spiritual light and guidance. Does that mean the man heard voices? From the research I've done in the last week or so, and I told you I was working on this, most people with Asperger's do not hear voices. Although, we do have a tendency to drug our mystics to death. So was he gifted? We'll never know. But in other words, he was led by an angelic, a fallen angel, a hierarchy. Which angelic hierarchy? He posted a direct link to the ancient alien mystery, the rise of the Anunnaki from the UFO at the Disclosure Movie Network, Roseburg, Oregon. Mpaka Community College is also very significant. It is a Masonic clue. It is a symbol directly connected to the occult and the fallen angels, the Anunnaki specifically. The Confederate General and Freemason Albert Pike said of the Rose, the Rose was an ancient sacred aurora. And the sun. It is a symbol of the dawn, of the resurrection of light, and of the renewal of life. Therefore, of the dawn of the first day, and more particularly of the resurrection, and the cross, and the rose together, are therefore a hieroglyphic to read the dawn of the eternal light which all nations have hoped for by the advent of the Redeemer. The goddess Inanna. Again, we go back to the queen of the earth, queen of the heavens, Inanna, or Lulawa of the Anunnaki was a senior what do we call her um, goddess to the matrilineal house of dragons her sons by Cain were Atun and Hanok better known as Etan and Enoch Sumerian records relate the king of Atun of Kish partook of the plant of life in order to father his son King Bali. The plant of life was directly associated with longevity and the kingship or the caneship. The plant of life is the star of fire. Now star fire because you've probably heard this a lot. It's something that's coming up a lot on Facebook. Starfire. It's associated with feeding the pineal gland, producing hormonal secretions. The early starfire, just to recap, was not anything to do with a high priestess. It's strictly an anaki. The female essence which is called the nectar of the supreme excellence. The Anunnaki flower, or the lily, was held to be the cup bearer. The cup bearer is the grail lore, became the bearer of the grail. The grail was the Rosicrucians, which represented the starfire of the womb the cup of water and the cup bearer, the transmission of rich food, as they put it, 
was called the Rose of Sharon. And this becomes an old Sumerian word, Shar, comes from that, which means orbit and on, which is related to light, the orbit of light. She was the rose of the orbit of light. The significance is, in fact, venerated even in the Bible. In Solomon, lilies and roses were the brides. For the Messianic Kings, I am the Rose of Sharon, I am the Lily of the Valley, she is the Bride of the Starfire. The Anunnaki have generally become, or claimed to be, the Satanic Fallen Angels of Biblical Text. The Secret Spiritual Light and the guidance behind the Alpha, Tau, Omega, the Order of 1865, the secret doctrine of Cainship, of the Knights Templar, and the Knights of Malta. Again, I have a picture with the classic stupid smirk of an MK Ultra mind controlled black Manchurian candidate up there for you. For your viewing pleasure. So here's the kicker. That should knock your socks off. Harper Mercer's internet profile name is the Iron Cross 45. The Iron Cross is a variant of the Cross Patty. The Cross Patty is associated with Variant crosses of Knights Templar, Teutonic Knights, the Knights of Malta. The 45 symbolizes the fall of Nazi Germany in 1945, the rise in the underground, and its change of venue to America. Mpaka Community College Massacre is yet another new Centurion Brotherhood false flag operation. It is a clandestine work of the military sodomite army. The firm, or the brotherhood, that has been exposed by Catherine Griggs. Wonderful article up there for her. Um, she really, really breaks this down. Now the Cain ship and the rise of the devil in Birmingham people of Jefferson County, Alabama, you shall serve the Queen Bee. It has been more than four years since the black U.S. veteran, John Gregory Jr. Do you remember that? John Gregory Jr. passed to the other side on Thursday, August 18, 2011, for medical complications resulting from a torturous medical treatment at the U.S. Veterans Administration in Birmingham. After almost two, a two-year delay in appointing an administrator or executor to carry out Mr. Gregory's last will and testament, a small and very modest estate, Jefferson County Probate Court, Judge Ellen L. King appointed attorney of law Elizabeth Beth W. McElroy as Jefferson County's public administrator for Gregory Estate on May 22, 2013. Both the Judge King and McElroy are fully compensated public officers empowered by the people of Jefferson County and the state of Alabama. The descendant's real property consists of only one resident property and four small vacant lots in traditionally black section of Pratt City, Birmingham. Mr. Gregory built the two-bedroom house with his own hands decades ago. He left a small, modest checking and saving account 
There were no stocks. There were no bonds. There were no 401s. There are no will contestants because the probate court, this judge, Alan King, denied probating his last will and testament. Now for over two years, with the heart in the cold blood of a snake, McElroy refused to carry out her duties to Mr. McGregory's family, clearly mandated by the probate code, the county law, the state and federal constitution, the equality of cold blood. Well, equally of cold blood, this judge, Judge King, demands the family serve the whims of McElroy, demand the money from the heirs. It isn't so clear that their refusal to serve Mr. Gregory's family with basic human dignity in the loss of a loved one, as citizens endowed with rights and privileges and immunities of a county and the state, is part of Birmingham's tradition of radical racial hatred, of course, intolerance and violence. However, there is now absolutely no legal or human justification for King and McElroy to continually hold the Gregory's estate in a state of indefinite abeyance for five years without concluding that there exists a new and vile wickedness, evil personified, seething in the open, in the public domain. This is not conspiracy theory here. This is not a rabbit hole. This is a matter of public record. It has become the left-hand path of this government. It's as if the devil himself is holding court. Now for more than a generation, the state of Alabama and the city of Birmingham has been like any other county, a law and nation unto itself, fighting the Civil War and the U.S. Constitution. Together, they have shocked and rocked the nation and the world with its radical racial extermination and its tolerance for man's inhumanity to man during the 20th century. The late Harrison Salisbury was very seasoned. Well, he was actually pretty courageous, I have to say. Pulitzer Prize winning correspondent for the New York Times who roamed some of the world's most dangerous places and man's most bloody conflicts of the 20th century, such as the Nazi invasion and the seas of Leningburg. In 1960, New York City Times sent Salisbury to Birmingham to report what was going on in the ground. And like a war correspondent, he sent back a dispatch from the city that must have startled the nation. In the Times front page entitled, Fear and Hatred Grip Birmingham, he said, Every channel of communication, every medium of mutual interest, every reasoned approach, every inch of middle ground has been fragmented by an emotional, dynamic racism enforced by the whip and the razor, and the gun, and the bomb, and the torch, and the club, and the knife, and the mob, and the police, and the many branches of the state apparatus. Like something out of a terror and hell of war zone. I have a picture of this little girl who survived a bomb blast that shocked America and was heard over this planet. September 15th, 1963, the club, the mob, and the police, and many branches of the state's apparatus still at war against itself and all fellow human beings, non-violent citizens, children alike, on that Sunday morning, 
A bomb was planted under the steps of the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham. Do you remember that? We've talked about Birmingham before. Now the bomb injured many. Slaughtered four Sunday school children. For a moment that made the earth stand still. Monday, September 16, 1963, a young Alabama lawyer named Charles Morgan, Jr., a white man with a young family, Southerner by heart and heritage, stood up at a lunch meeting of a racially segregated Birmingham Young Men's Business Club. He said four little girls were killed in Birmingham yesterday. A mad remorseful, worried community asked who did it? Who threw the bomb? Was it Negro or white? The answer should have been we all did it. Every last one of us is condemned for that crime. And that bombing. Before it and a decade ago we all did it. The who is every little individual who talks about the niggers and words, sorry, and spreads the seeds of this hate to his neighborhood and his sons. The jokester, the crude oaf, whose racial jokes rock the party with laughter. The who is every governor who ever shouted for lawlessness and made a law, well, made himself become a law violator. Every senator, every representative in the halls of Congress stands with a mock humility, tells the world that things back home really aren't like they really are. It's the courts that move ever so slowly in the newspapers. That could completely defend this law. It's all the Christians and all their ministers, and all their ministers who spoke too late in the anguish cries against violence. It is the coward in each of us who clucks. And sits. We have ten years of lawless preachments, ten years of criticism of law, of courts, of our fellow men, a decade of telling school children the opposite of what civics books say. We are a mass of intolerance and bigotry and stand indicated before our young. We are cursed by the failure of each of us to accept responsibility by the defense of an already dead institution. Who is really guilty? Each of us. Each citizen who is not consciously accepted or at least attempted to bring about a peaceful compliance with decisions of Supreme Court of the United States. Every citizen who has ever said they ought to kill that whatever color. I just saw a kill all white people post earlier on Facebook because you can just freaking say that because people have become so perverted. They're sick. It's disgusting. Every citizen who votes for a candidate with a bloody flag. Every citizen, every school board member, every school teacher, every principal, every businessman, every judge, every lawyer who has corrupted the minds of our young. Each person in this community, vast, it doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't anymore. Every member of this community who has in any way contributed during the past several years to the popularity of hatred 
is at least guilty, or more so, than the demented fool who threw that bomb, who is allowing their children to be drugged, who is allowing our government to kill, slaughter, a hospital and not jump up and down and complain that nothing is being said about it. What's it like living in Birmingham? No one ever really has known. No one will until this city becomes part of the United States. It's not dying. It's dead. Like most of this planet already is. I'm not talking about the mother herself. She will be fine. She has time and patience. We do not have that. We have neither. So when Morgan concluded, he sat down. There was no applause. There was only silence. Amongst the young businessmen at the meeting was... Judge Alan King's father, Tom King, that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. identified as one of Birmingham's cold-blooded, evil sacredness is for segregation. Now, following that speech, the threats began almost immediately. The very next morning, 5 a.m., Morgan received a call. Is the mortician there yet? A voice asked. I don't know any morticians, Morgan responded. Well, you will, the voice answered, when the bodies are all over your front lawn. The threats against Morgan and his family became serious. They were real. He closed down his businesses business practice, he fled Birmingham. The bombing of the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham that slaughtered four children on Black Sunday, school children, has gone down in history as one of the greatest crimes of the ultimate evil in the 20th century. Alto called themselves the Knights of Malta and carried the Maltese cross. The key to understanding the evil personification of Judge Alan Lamar King, you must take seriously what a secret society his fraternal order called themselves during its formation. They will not dare to make that admission today, the Knights of Malta. It may not be just a fling of someone's fancy, an imagination, or an idle boast. As pointed out, Judge King is directly linked to and substantially evolved in the inner circle and the brotherhood, Alpha, Tau, Omega, the ATO, the Order of 1865 founded in Virginia Military Institute, Lexington. So who are these guys? Knight of Malta, Queen of England, Elizabeth II, Sovereign Military Order of St. John of Jerusalem of Rhodes and of Malta, also known as the Sovereign Order, well, Sovereign Military Order of Malta, S-M-O-M. Order of Malta, Order of the Knights of Malta, Roman Catholic, lay religious order, of traditional, military, chivalrous, noble nature, world's oldest surviving order of chivalry, shows you what that is, the SMOM is headquartered in Rome, Italy, widely considered a sovereign subject of international law. The SMOM, modern continuation of the original medieval Order of St. John of Jerusalem, 
Knights of Hospitaller. Pope Clement V dissolved them in the fellow Knight Brotherhood. The Knights Templar, 1312, series of papal bulls, including the Ab Pro Viden Bull, which turned over much of their property to their brothers, Hospitallers. Also, Knight of Malta, the Beast, 666, Alistair Crowley. S-M-O-N They are the most powerful group known to man. These are the guys you don't hear of. If you think the Illuminati and the Freemasons are the ones ruling your little world, then you better check your real history books again. They are your CIA. They are your politicians. They are your lobbyists. They are your previous, past, and future kings. They are your presidents. They are your prime ministers. They are the reason for the false flags. These are the reasons for your crisis actors who are all military. Don't get it twisted. Virginia Military Institute that founded Alpha Tau Omega was a full-fledged war college. At the outbreak of the Great Civil War, VMI cadet troops trained recruits for the Confederate Army in the Richmond area. The corps was later reconstituted at the Institute to supply officers for the Confederacy. Do you think they'd have any problems training a mixed boy? We're going to take a little break. Buckle up. We're going to dive in deep today. You're listening to Turtle Island News. something from Charles Dickens because it's very appropriate for now and he's one of my favorite authors he had the best stories ever it was the best of times it was the worst of times it was the age of wisdom it was the age of foolishness it was the epoch of belief it was the epoch of incredible Julity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven. We were all going direct the other way. In short, the period was so far like the present period that none of its noisiest authorities insisted on its being received for good or for evil in the superlative degree of comparison only. Whoop, but there it is. Here we are. We stand together. We're taken down as a family. One way or another, we go together. The light, the dark, the white, the brown, the red, the yellow, 
the light workers, the dark workers, the Sith friggin' lords of our time. And we are ruled by Alpha, Tau, T-A-U, Omega. Full-fledged. These beings of darkness. These horrific seasoned soldiers and knights tied together by an ancient secret and sacred knightly and Masonic bond. During the 19th century, fraternities were organized as secret blood oath societies, and still are. Masonic friends, not saying all Masons are bad, most are just guys, and they're hanging out together because guys do that. But these... And most of its members have no idea of any fraternal orders, any clandestine roots, any ties to the occult. Albert Pike said, Masonry, like all the religions, all the mysteries, hermeticism, alchemy, conceals its secrets from all except the adepts and the sages and the elect, and uses faults explanations and misinterpretations of all its symbols to mislead those who deserve only to be misled to conceal the truth which it calls light and to draw them away from it. Most of the WMI cadets that founded the fraternity actually fought in the battle of New Market Heights. Cadet Otis Allen Glasbrook founded the ATO with cadets Erskine Mayo Ross Alfred Marshall once again on another September 11th 1865 this time at Lexington, Virginia about five months after General Lee's surrender. Gleisbrook fought with the cadet, uh, Confederate generals Robert E. Lee, Thomas Stonewall Jackson, may they rot in the seventh house, Stanford Hall Plantation, Westmoreland County, VA, was the home of four generations of the Lee family in Virginia, including Sue, two signers of the Declaration of Independence. One of them is so mixed that he can't even stand himself. Look at, look at his face. I see your little DNA. Anyway, it was the birthplace of General Lee. Neither General Jackson General Lee were documented Masons, I will admit, but it's widely accepted that General Jackson may or may not have belonged to this traveling military Masonic Lodge during the Mexican War. Only the most powerful are confirmed. Masonic invisible degrees that you can only get by birth, you cannot sign up for to at least three generations Illuminati family connected bloodlines and by the way, the invasion going on in Europe, and that is an invasion why is no one mentioning it's mostly males coming up there why is it all guys, and they're all they're pretty buff Daddy's packing. Hmm. She says to herself, questioningly. So back to General Lee. Would certainly qualify under the category to be a member of Illuminati by birth. General Grant's images on my site, of course. Hidden hand symbols that he had been an invisible knight 
of this order. Grant's hand symbol, similar to Heinrich Himmler's private secretary, SS Karl um, Friedrich Otto Wolf, another grand officer of the knightly order of the Roman Eagle under the Duce Benito Mussolini. This group does not have a country. This is what I'm saying. It's not in a country. We are all under this what? Parasitic cross-dressing fraternity. So the Maltese cross. The order of the Roman eagle. This is Rome. This is Rome again. And I'm not saying those freaking white people and yeah, I, I see the message I just got. Okay, listen. Leave my white people alone. They have it hard enough. And they are going under the same shit that we're going under. And by the way, they would not be so screwed up if there was not an invasion into Europe by who? Africa. Yeah, so there's a little bit of payback going on right now. Don't make me do that show, because I will. Okay, moving on. General Ulysses S. Grant, his father, and two brothers were members of this Masonic Lodge. Um, Illinois. Galena? Yeah, I think that's how you say Galena. Um, the father often told friends Ulysses intended to petition for the degrees, but in the press of duties in the army and in the presidency, it was too late. In 1871, Grant told a group of Knights Tem Templars that he returned home. He would petition the Miner's Lodge, number 273. the Grand Master arranged to make him a mason at sight. But Grant died before this could be accomplished. But you can find out that that really happened. Anyway, at least that is what they say was going to happen. The truth is always another matter with the masons. These masters of deception these people who allow us to read the news. The news which is about the time and the space. It is about CERN. It is north, east, west, south. Master of time and space. Deity, mercy, the light of masonry. General Grant's April 9th, 1865 terms for surrender Virginia were far too generous for the Confederacy that initiated America's most bloody and dividing conflicts in history. We're not talking about the takeover, but we're talking about how when people were really trying to work together, because that did happen here. Let's not forget that. There was a time that we fought together and we didn't give a crap about our little skin colors. This is the filth that we live under today. So, in effect, General Grant and his staff had given General Lee and his entire army and Confederate Southern gentlemen blanket pardons. At the Appomattox Courtyard Complex, Grant's pardons rolled out of the printing press by the thousands. Grant officially squelched talk of trying some of them. General Robert E. Lee, for treason, by the way, by threatening to resign if the pardons were not honored and were not carried out. The Masonic Brotherhood are bound by blood oath to respond and provide with comfort and compassion and assistance 
to the brethren. Even at war with brother against brother upon a secret symbol did Dias the distress call. One Masonic distress call is commonly recognized as an act of surrender. The act of surrender is not giving up. Or it wouldn't start with sir. Or you wouldn't say as you are, as sir, ender. It's something completely different. So, General Grant's abject was Lieutenant Colonel Eli Samuel Parker. Parker was Seneca. Oh, yes, he was. He was a Seneca Nation, Native American. So know that there was a whole bunch more going on. Yes, he was Seneca. Don't even fight me on this. You can't win. Okay, moving on. General Grant insisted on respectfully introducing his staff members to his brethren, General Robert E. Lee, individually. The legend is that General Lee, courteous, shook each man's hand. Now at first, General Lee hesitated at shaking Parker's hand, apparently mistaking him for a black freeman or mulatto because natives were darker then. We hadn't been doing the, you know, as much. Anyway. However, most likely a secret Masonic sign, a symbol, extended to his hand. Lieutenant Colonel Parker, with the gracious comment, I am glad to see thee, one real American here, which had nothing to do with the name America. Real America? General Lee's response to Colonel Parker was secretly a Masonic recognition. Masons believe Native Americans were amongst the most ancient Masonic brethren. Oh yes, they did. Which is why we have six nations today. Now descendants of one of the lost tribes of Israel, that's what they believed, that colonized the Americas. Which, in part, is true. Colonized, as in, there were some Masons that friggin' came over. Now, way before Columbus. Columbus, also, Columbo, a Knight Templar of Christ, proclaimed that these newly discovered Indians were in fact Jewish origins, and he actually had people who spoke several dialects of um, Yiddish and Hebrew, and on his ships he had people who spoke several dialects of Aramaic and several of the Hebraic kind of languages, so Arabic in general. Columbus even suggested that Spain could recruit their bodies and their wealth to assist the Europeans in the final crusade to crush Islam, to reclaim Jerusalem. And as we know, and have talked about before, there actually was a native delegation that went over to Europe and did help fight in the Crusades. Another story. It took a long time. But it happened. Now according to Mormon, so Masonic theology, Indians 
also were the lost tribe of Israel. Israel in the old term for it, which meant the first island. It's closer to what um, al Kabulan, being Africa, means the motherland. Land of the mother. Now Columbus, by the light of the fallen angels, greeting and the shaking of hands with certain Native American representatives at one of the members of the Lost Tribes of Israel is documented as a secret rite of Alpha Tau Omega, the Order of 1865. It's in there. Now since at least 1857, the entire Civil War, Lieutenant Colonel Part Parker had been a close friend, a mentor, and an advisor of General Grant from Galena, Illinois. Parker was the grandson of Red Jacket, nephew of Hanson Lake, competing leaders of New York's Seneca Nation. And I'm sure Chief Charles Tudok and I have talked about Red Jacket because I think I think you're related to him, are you not, Tudok? Anyway, now during the late 18th century, Handsome Lake, guided by four angels, that's what they said, accused Red Jacket of witchcraft And Red Jacket accused Handsome Lake of manufacturing visions. They were both led by an angelic hierarchy of the Masons, most likely these ancient biblical Anunnaki. Red Jacket had been a British military lodge Freemason. He was conferred a British red coat during the Revolutionary War in secret Knight Templar Masonic Esoteric Cosmology he was guided by angelic beings Satanic Fallen Angels if you will Red Jacket had also been a close friend of Master Mason President George Washington he often wore a large prized medallion on his neck that President Washington gave to him to commemorate their friendship. And oh yes, I have pictures. Now this is not actually Lieutenant Colonel Parker. It's an example of a 19th century um, Knight Templar uniform, a sash, an apron. Now Lieutenant Colonel Parker was a Master Mason and the Grecian Grand Orator of the Lodge of Illinois. Parker was one of the founders of Miner's Lodge, number 273, in Galena. He had set the lodge's counterstone himself, yet was set, set by a Seneca. On December 27, 1859, the lodge celebrated a grand ball, actually called the Ballon, um, St. John the Evangelist Day, for the special affair, Eli S. Parker was clothed in the uniform of a Knight Templar. Lieutenant Colonel Parker was also a Scottish Rite, York Royal Arch. Freemason and Knight Templar. In September 1859, he was a high priest and one of the founding charter members of Joe Davis Charter of Royal Ark No. 5, Illinois Northern Jurisdiction. Manley P. Hall said, Freemasonry is a fraternity within a fraternity, an outer organization concealing an inner brotherhood of the elect. It is necessary to establish the existence of these two separate and yet in the interdependent orders. 
one visible, the other invisible. The visible society is splendid. It is a camaraderie of free and accepted men, enjoying to devote themselves to ethical, educational, fraternal, patriotic, humanitarian concerns. The invisible society is a secret and most august, defined as majestic dignity, grandeur. Fraternity whose members are dedicated to the service of mysterious Akurum Akurum, defined as a secret within a secret in a mystery. This is from Hall's lecture on ancient philosophy. Now, press of duties in the army and the presidency were no barriers to general grants. Masonic Lodge membership at sight. Grant was indeed an invisible inner circle, Knight Templar. Master Mason conferred the highest Masonic degree from his close friend and mentor, the Masonic inner circle fraternity, the Knight Templar of the High Priest and Worshipful Master of the Miner's Lodge. Number 273. Colonel Parker. It was in their interest and the grand scheme, not America, never America, to conceal Ulysses S. Grant's Masonic membership. He was to become the Mason's highest elected official and commander in chief of the armed forces of the United States of America. Well, it wasn't United. Well, don't worry about it. So General Grant and Lieutenant Parker, a pardon, and most likely invisible Knight Templars, Masonic degrees tucked under his coattail, General Lee moved to Lexington, VA, home to the WMI, to become the patron symbol and the saint of the Confederate resistance. The Second Civil War the forefront of the underground lost cause struggle for a far more secret high brotherhood new order in America. Alpha Tau Omega and the initiation rites of the Knights of the Maltese Cross. VMI Cadet Glassbrook I have a picture. Founder of the ATO publicly claimed that he was not a Mason, but he was. John Wilkes Booth, hidden hand symbol of Albert Pike's ultra-clandestine and violent counterintelligence and assassination wing of the Confederate Army, Knights of the Golden Circle, Illuminati General Robert E. Lee, whose ideals of chivalry and gentlemanly conduct inspires the founders of the Alpha Tau Omega, was designed and designated the spiritual founder of the order. It owes to the prestige of General Lee, the Illuminati. In the beginning, the ceremony with the members hooded and gowned in white muslin I'm sure they call it that for a reason, as the white Muslims walk around the cube sometimes, saying the chant, buck naked underneath that thing, was clearly buried and borrowed from the rites of the medieval chivalry that they got from down there. Not up here. Not from Europe. Thereby initiates called themselves Knights of Malta, Knights of the Maltese Cross, the Grand Seal, formerly the coat of arms, painted while the ceremony was being used, symbolized the ideas of chivalry. When they pervaded the fraternity's esoteric concepts, again, came from the Middle East, barred from South Africa. 
Now the grand seal of Alpha Tau Omega was formerly the fraternity's coat of arms, painted by Richard Norris, book of the VMI, presented and adopted by Nashville Congress, 1870, and was used while the first ceremony was in use. It in illustrates to the extent to which that the ideas of chivalry pervaded the esoteric, so fallen angel, stuff, and the teachings of this fraternity. April 10, 1873, President Ulysses F. Grant, yes, Grant, appointed the fraternal order and the artist Richard Brooke of Virginia, American Council of La Rouge, France. That's on the surface, and it is very unusual to be appointed council to one European city. Most, well, more than likely, Brooke was an appointed American council to the European councils of the Knights Templar. The Knights Templar had a strong presence in La Rouge before the time of Eleanor of Aquitaine, who exempted them from duties and gave them mills in her 1139 charter. In the Da Vinci Code theories, the Holy Grail was discovered in the Holy Land and became the, prevent the possession of the Knights Templar, the Prince Raymond of Antioch. In 1149, Prince Raymond gave the Grail to his niece Eleanor of Aquitaine. Now, Eleanor of Aquitaine would normally see her as a very tall, red-haired lady. But know that her stories are of a, a very dark-skinned lady who is actually a mermaid and from Africa. We'll go into that. But anyway, who took it with her to England when she married King Henry II? It's an awesome story, by the way, that King Henry II married her and had made a vow that people knew about that at the time of the full moon he was not allowed to see her, that she went back to the waters. One time she did and then later disappeared. But anyway, LaRouche was of the Templars, the largest base on the Atlantic Island, and where they stationed their main fleet from La um, Rochelle, they were able to act as intermediaries in the trade between England and the Mediterranean and further to Al Kabulon, Africa. Popular thread of Larusian origin with holy blood, holy grail, has it that the Templars used a fleet of 18 ships which had brought um, Jacques de Molay from Cyprus to um, La Rochelle to escape arrest in France. The fleet allegedly left laden with knights and treasures just before the issue of a warrant of the arrest um, of the order in October 1307. Brooke had been one of the secretaries of the R&D Richmond and Danville Railroad R&D was an essential transportation link for the Confederacy through the Civil War Richard Brooke's direct bloodline was with Robert Brooke he was a soldier a key operative during the American Revolutionary War in 1794 he represented Spotsylvania, I think they called it at the time. An English knight, Alexander Spotswood County. In the House of Delegates, on December 1st, the same year he was elected governor of Virginia. In 1798, he was elected attorney general of the state. Another nephew of General George Washington, 
Brooke was the Grand Master of a Grand Lodge of Virginia. This we know for sure. Now, Brooke's father was James West Brooke. He was an ardent Whig. This is what he called them. He served as Virginia's Commonwealth Attorney, State Secretary of the American Party. He was elected to the Convention of 1861, signed the Ordinance of Succession, 1862. He organized and took the battlefield of the Great War. Book's Battery of the Confederacy, which was attached to Stonewall Jackson's Corp. Corp. Those guys. Now, James West Book, Active Mason, Knight Templar, Direct Brethren Brother of Lieutenant Colonel Eli S. Parker. So, our brother. Seneca and much of the pervading secret fallen angel esoteric teachings knowledge of the Knight Templar knowledge of the Knights of Malta and Freemasons contained within Brooks Alpha Tau Omega classic illustrated Maltese cross seal the book family had a long established his- history in colonial Virginia probably prehistory of colonial Virginia, to be honest. English colonist Alexander Spotswood as part of his Knights of the Golden Horseshoe, which they established here. Now Scotswood, 1676, 1740, Lieutenant Colonel, British Army, noted Lieutenant Governor of Virginia was known as a Tubal Cain of Virginia. We are the people of the Golda, clan of the Tubal Cain, and remain closed, initiatory group, aligned to the shadow mysteries within the Luc- Luciferian stream. And I do have a link. When a Freemason reaches the 32nd degree, the Master Mason, his code word, his password, is Tubal Cain. In the Bible, Tubal Cain was the murderer from the beginning, the son of Satan. Recall that Satan was also identified as a fallen angel, Saphio, Samal, or Samuel the prince of demons and satans. Samuel, with his mate, Lilith, created the offspring, the Baphomet. Now here's the secret of the Mark of Cain. The Maltese cross, the Mark of Cain, go back to T4. And a picture I have of a demon the demon Cain in the church dedicated to Saint Magdalene in a remote village of Rennes Le Chateau southern France extremely long complex artistic occult I'll explain artistic another time history that goes back to the 18th century AD there is a secret and a forbidden doctrine passed down from Cain to his descendants that is preserved in various secret occult societies that the Holy Grail families have formed throughout the ages taken from ancient South Africa moved to Samaria moved all over but and Babylon Babylonian times where where the new Jews learned their myths and mythologies and stuff. But sources from the Bible. Cain, Adamic, Eve, and Nodite, father. The Nodites, named after Nod, were the fallen. They were the Nephilim from the Bible and the Igigi from Sumerian t- 
tablets and tales and the ogli who are now the veve the voodoo um, seers the Adamics and the nodites were constantly at war with each other this is the stories of the keepers of the hive and the spiders the fallen and not fallen this is the good guy in the bad guy the white versus black this is the two supreme evils now some believe that Cain's father was slain by the inhabitants of the garden it suggested that the animosity that existed between Cain and Abel was because Cain's father was not Adam but a, a nodite biblical Nephilim some say he was the actual serpent but again this is for another time it's also thought that the fallen angel Samuel Satan appeared to Eve as a serpent and seduced her or gave her the power to produce on her own the fruit of that union either way was Cain became a king who is why we say king and Cain which became queen Samael was essentially the Judaic Lucifer different guys it may be the basic and the basis of the alleged Merovingian assertion that they possess the blood of both Christ Adam and Lucifer in this case there's another story that proclaims Cain was the son of Adam and Lilith not Eve before Adam's first wife Lilith had been the consort of God before coming to earth as a fallen angel that she would have been the queen of heaven and was with the God the one now Cain murders his brother Abel God banished Cain to the land of Nod east of Eden there is also a secret and forbidden doctrine passed down from Cain to his descendants that has been preserved in various secret occult societies that the Holy Grail families have formed throughout the ages the mark of Cain believed to have been inflicted upon Adam's first son is said to have been caused by a stone that fell from Lucifer's crown during the war in heaven and bounced off Cain's forehead and hit the ground and became the black goo of which we spoke now according to this lore the mark is the shape of a red dragon or serpent the jewel from Satan's crown became the sacred relic handed down dynasty after dynasty father to son eventually in the possession of King Solomon consistently the secret and forbidden knowledge particularly of the Knights Templar linked Cain to the son of Satan Lucifer and the mark of Cain is the Cain ship it's symbolized as the Red Cross surrounded by a circle the Knights Templar received from Pope um, Eunatius 1146 is the mark of Cain as a symbol of their holy order also the mark of Cain is symbolized as a red cross surrounded by the circle now Alpha Tau Omega's Maltese cross inside a circle is similar to Albert Pike's ultra secret Confederate Masonic Army, Assassin Seal, the Knights of the Golden Circle, the Golden Dawn, symbolize exactly the mark of Cain. The circle with the cross inside. Fancy one. Now Judge Alan King. Rapidly moving behind the veil to ultimate power and control in Jefferson County. He stands in the position as the chief royal official for Jefferson County. 
Jefferson County with Birmingham at its hub is the most populous area in the state. He sits in the position to affect who is elected to local, county, state office, U.S. House of Representatives, the Senate, the President in close elections. He is the chair of the Citizens Supervisory Commission. Whatever that may be beyond being the chief electoral office. It looks like he controls the county personnel, the civil council board, the emergency management department. When they finally create the Pearl Harbor to justify the disarming of the people, the official one, this judge, this judge king already has a plan. He has a machine under his coattail, and I'm calling it. This is a great deal of power that belongs to the people and the control and the custody of the secret brotherhood of Cain. The invisible knights of Malta. Judge King has the wicked and cold heart of a serpent, the Luciferian agenda, to clandestinely remove and move power from the people to establish a new world order, the beehive, the honeycomb of Cain's ship. This clandestine activity under the cloak of government is quietly taking place behind the veil across the world, especially across your nation in the States. It takes a brotherhood to allow Judge King, Jefferson County, to flaunt power reserved to the people to stand open rebellion of the law of the land in the public domain on the backs of taxpayers. How deep is the clandestine brotherhood of Cain in Birmingham, Jefferson County, state of Alabama, the brotherhood of Cain in Alabama State Bar? August 14th, 2013 Julia Ann Roberts The issue of the body of John Gregory Jr. filed a formal complaint against Beth McElroy with the Civil State Bar Basically, from the lay of perspective she complained that she hadn't been heard from McElroy causing family stress and concern and that she appeared without authority the opposing party, the appeal of Judd King's probate, order breaching the duties to the family. My long story short to this is what we are seeing in the United States, what we have just seen is the takeover. Who did it? We got the who done it, and I'm calling who's doing it next. This is what's going to happen. These are the people in charge of it. This, we ain't there yet, guys. We are not there yet, but it's very, very, very close. And I have the particulars of this. On my page. Now, when we talk about false flags, no, the flag is very, very real. It's absolutely real. A man boasting a gun collection online, shooting a place where Open carry is legal. Of course, they want to take your guns. Absolutely. They want to take your guns. But there is an esoteric law that allows Portland Meadows to install instant racing, even gambling machines. This is going to be a big deal very, very soon. Oregon, you have been served. Thank you.
Thank you very much, everyone. Tell me Tuesday.